Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Karen Dina, and today I'm going to talk about two popular early fall fruits, figs and blackberries. Now in our neighborhood here in Northern California, there are many different places where we can go to pick wild growing blackberries. In fact, just a couple of days ago, I went and harvested some. And here in our yard, we have some black mission figs growing. Our tree is just bursting with figs right now. It's really amazing. So I went and picked some earlier today. Now, oftentimes people in the raw food community ask me if certain fruits are a good source of minerals. So let's take a look at the mineral content of these two popular fruits. To get started, let's take a look at figs. Here's a picture of black mission figs from the tree in our yard. Here's a picture of some that I harvested a couple of days ago. And then here's a picture of one growing on our tree. Here's a nutrient analysis of figs. What we have here for six medium figs is 222 calories. And for calcium, we have 105 to 120 milligrams. Now it's important to note that there can be a range for certain nutrients because if we're talking about a natural product, it's not surprising to see some natural variation in the nutrient content depending on a number of factors. If we compare that calcium content to the daily values over here of 1,000 milligrams for most adults and 1,200 milligrams for older adults, this amount of calcium for 222 calories is good. For iron, we have 1.1 milligram. And if we compare that to uh, 8 milligrams for men and postmenopausal women and 18 milligrams for premenopausal women, that amount of iron is a good start. For magnesium, we have 51 milligrams. If we compare that to the daily values here, that's good as well. Potassium, we have almost 700 milligrams. When compared to the daily value, that's excellent for 222 calories. And zinc content here is 0.5. And when we compare that to the daily value of eight milligrams for women and 11 milligrams for men, that's also a good start. Next, we have blackberries. And here's a picture of some blackberries that I harvested a couple of days ago. And here's a picture of some blackberries growing. Now, when I go out to harvest blackberries, I'm very mindful of the thorns that oftentimes you find on these plants. Blackberries are in the rose family, so it's not surprising to find thorns on leaves and stems of blackberry plants. So I'm very mindful so I don't hurt myself when I go out picking blackberries. Here is a nutrient analysis of one cup of blackberries. What we find here is 62 calories, 42 milligrams of calcium, which is excellent for 62 calories. 0.9 milligrams of iron, that's also excellent for 62 calories. Magnesium, 29, that's very good. Uh, potassium, 233, that's very good. And then zinc here at 0.8 is very good as well for 62 calories. Here's a nutrient comparison of blackberries and figs for similar numbers of calories. And what we find is that the blackberries are superior in calcium content, iron content, magnesium content, potassium content, and zinc content. As you can see, blackberries eaten in quantity can be a significant source of these important minerals. Figs are very good as well, but definitely blackberries are notably superior. Not only can blackberries be a good source of important minerals, they also are well known for being a good source of antioxidants. Now, antioxidants are molecules that neutralize free radicals before they can cause damage to our cells. So let's take a look at an interesting study here. The uh, name of the study is Content of Redox Active Compounds, i.e. antioxidants, in foods consumed in the United States. Here is the literature citation. Let me blow that up for you here. The journal is the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and the study was published in 2006. Now, as of a couple of months ago, I was able to find this article full text on PubMed.com. So if you're interested in looking at this study, I would encourage you to do so. So make note of this citation here and go and check it out for yourself. It's pretty fascinating. 
Here is a page excerpt from the study. And over here we have table number three that shows 50 foods with the highest antioxidant content. And the way that these antioxidants were measured was in millimoles per 100 grams. So the researchers took these different foods and measured 100 grams of them and reported the antioxidant content in those 100 grams. Now whereabouts are blackberries on our list? There they are right there at 3.99 millimoles per 100 grams. Now what were some of the foods that were found to be higher than blackberries? Up here on the top of the list, we have ground cloves at 125 millimoles per 100 grams. And some of the foods that followed were oregano at 40, a ginger at 21, cinnamon, turmeric, walnuts, basil, mustard, curry powder, pecans, chocolate, paprika, chili powder, and so forth. Now there is a challenge with measuring the antioxidant content of certain foods per 100 grams. And that challenge is one needs to consider how much of these foods one actually eats in one serving. For example, does it make sense that somebody's going to eat 100 grams of cloves? Not really. Usually, if somebody adds some cloves to their food, they usually put in about a teaspoon or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the recipe. It does make sense, however, that somebody would eat 100 grams of blackberries. So let's take a look at a different point of view. Here is another table that shows the 50 foods with the highest antioxidant content per serving size. Now, the serving size that was looked at here for blackberries is one cup. And the serving size examined here for cloves is one teaspoon. That's much more realistic. So where is blackberries on our list now? There it is at the top at 5.7 millimoles per serving or 5.7 millimoles per cup. And then the foods that follow are walnuts, strawberries, artichokes, cranberries, coffee, raspberries, pecans, blueberries, and ground cloves. So per serving, blackberries were higher than all the other foods tested. What type of antioxidants do we find in blackberries? One group are the anthocyanins. And if we take a close look at this word anthocyanin, we see the word cyan. And cyan means blue. So anthocyanins are blue in color. And when they are present in a fruit or vegetable, they lend a bluish color to those fruits and vegetables. Other fruits besides blackberries that are rich in anthocyanins would include blueberries and raspberries. In closing, how do we enjoy figs and blackberries? Well, one of the easiest ways and the most fun ways that we've found to enjoy our figs is just to go out to our tree and pick them and give them a rinse and just eat them that way. And they're so good. We do the same thing with blackberries, but we also like to put blackberries into our smoothie. And here's an example of a smoothie that we like that has orange juice, bananas, blackberries, and some type of leafy green. There's so many different ways that you can enjoy these wonderful early fall fruits. Thanks for watching. And for those of you interested in learning more about our educational opportunities, such as our online and in-person classes, please visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com. And for those of you interested in lab testing and nutrition consulting, please visit our website at rawfoodconsulting.com. And if you found this information to be useful, please like, share, and subscribe.